Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? That's right. Listen to that sweet music. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Ah, this is the ACC Atlantic Preview. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. And of course, the show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can go over to tunicatravel.com to find more information about those. We have been through all of the other conferences other than the ACC and the SEC. Now we're rolling into the ACC Atlantic today. These are the teams that we are hitting today. Boston College Eagles, the Clemson Tigers, Florida State Seminoles, the Louisville Cardinals, NC State Wolfpack, the Syracuse Orange, and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Chris, how you feeling today? I'm good, man. Everything's good? Yes, sir. All right, all right. Let's, uh, let's not waste your time. Let's go ahead and fire in. Oh, by the way, go over to the podcast. Apple uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast app is. But on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. That helps out more than you know. Uh, go to YouTube and subscribe. Leave some comments. Tell us what you think about your team on here. Tell us what you think is going to happen. Tell us where we're wrong. Uh, we've got some guy that's an East Carolina fan. Have you seen this guy? No, I haven't. I haven't Holy mackerel. Tommy Gardner, I think is his name. Come Somebody on. like that. But this guy's left like nine comments telling us that we're clowns that East Carolina is going to demolish NC State in Raleigh the first weekend. He said, I'll be back on August 31st to see what happens. You know, y'all need to put up a video when you're wrong. And I said, well, we're going to be here every week through the entire season. So Now, like, we, we were recording this yeah. quite a bit earlier than the season starts. Yeah. Today is August 4th, August Sunday 4th. afternoon. Yep. So I, this game is going to happen almost two months from now. I, and I this guy, I don't is, know, I don't know, I don't know what I said yesterday. Well, we didn't say anything crazy at all, other than, <laughs> all right, well, they're gonna lose at NC State. Okay, like that was it. And he just, I'm talking, he called us clowns like eight or nine times. Clowns not so bad. Uh, and for anybody that questions, we don't delete any comments. And somebody huh. said that we don't delete comments. No. Uh, however, if it is very inappropriate, YouTube will flag that thing and yeah. it won't get posted. We can't like control that. that. Nothing I can do about that. But uh, so, yeah, I would uh, just let you know that in advance. But leave as many comments as you would like. Tell us where we're wrong. Tell us where we're right. If you agree with us, if you don't, whatever. Uh, but come in. We would love to hear from you. Hit that subscribe button. Let's jump in. The Boston College Eagles, seven and five last year, four and four in conference. They returned six starters on offense, three on defense. That's not good, by the way. Number 96 in experience returning. That's number 11 in the conference. Their over-under is six and a half. You go over that six and a half, it's plus 130. The juice for the under is minus 150. Head coach Steve Adazio, 38 and 38 in six years, which is the most Steve Adazio Boston College thing ever. Oh, come on, man. That's a really good thing at Boston College. No, it, it is, but what I'm saying is he's, it, it's, it's an average of like six and six every year. That's right. right. I mean, it's just... That's man, it's that's big time at Boston College. Yeah, in BC. No, it's, it's it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, but they he loses a great defense. They lose three out of their five offensive line starters, um, which the offensive line powers what he does, that's what right. he wants to do, which is a power running attack. Running back AJ Dillon is back. He had over eleven hundred yards last year in ten touchdowns. That is despite missing two games. Uh, he and Anthony Brown, the quarterback. Anthony Brown went out with an injury late in the year. He's back. Uh, he's not the most accurate passer, but he is a playmaker. I was going to say he's super athletic. Yeah. And yeah, he can he can spread the ball around, and he can make stuff happen with his legs, too. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the only issue with those two is the 2008 off- or 2018 offense, their success rate, 37.8. That was number 110 in FBS, number 13 in the ACC. So maybe they're a little bit predictable. And that can be a problem. Okay. Uh, they lose their offensive coordinator, Scott Leffler, to Bowling Green. We kind of laughed about that. Um, and, and he's he's going to be a head coach, which is why we laughed. Like, it is what it is. Uh, he demoted defensive coordinator Jim Reed to defensive end coach. The new D.C. is linebacker coach Bill Sheridan. 
the back half of the schedule is absolutely ridiculous. I was just about to say, yeah. Um, the Brutal. first half could provide, you know, a little bit of false hope. If they get a, a, an upset win over Virginia Tech in week one, they could open up at 6-0, 7-0, 6-0, 7-0. Yeah. I mean, they, they'd be 6-0 possibly before that, their that first That would be bye hard. Week. That, that's, that's, I don't know if that's realistic. Here's, here's where I have them. I've got them at seven and five. I've got them losing the opener to Virginia Tech, and then I've got them reeling off six straight wins over Richmond, Kansas, at Rutgers, Wake Forest, at Louisville, and then after the bye, they've got NC State at home. And then after that, at Clemson, at Syracuse, Florida State, a bye week, and at Notre Dame, I've got all losses. Correct. And then I've got a win at Pitt to end the season to go seven and five yet again. Uh I don't. This is not the year for the breakthrough. I don't believe. But if you're not going to get it while uh, AJ Dillon and Anthony Brown are here, I don't know when that's coming because these two guys are exceptional talent. No, they're really good, uh, and I I like Adazio. I, I, he's a character. Anyway, I like BC. <laughs> I, I you know big Italian. It. You guy. gotta love it. Like, it's it's yeah. dudes being dudes. Dudes. Yeah. He he's he is a definitely a big Italian Boston guy. Um, I got them six and six. I want them to be better. I, and I you just, could see six and six. You could see them losing at Pitt. You could see them losing two. The NC fact State. that they're thirty-eight and thirty-eight overall with him. I mean, I just think that is that is their record. Yeah. And I think six and six is really good at BC. Yes. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, they usually play somebody that they're supposed to lose really tight all the way to the wire, but they tend to not win that game. Which yeah. is really strange. You've got these teams, you've got these coaches that can pull off that one big upset every year. I watch them. I watch a lot of them, and I think this is it. This is going to be that game. And then they they kind of give it away in the fourth quarter. And it's just because at some point in time they don't have the athletes these other bigger programs do. We talked about their coaching staff and the changes and the, the manipulation of of demoting guys and bringing dudes in that. You kind of never really heard of. Yeah. I mean, they're not working with the budget that Clemson's working with. Or Florida State, like we're not even Louisville. Louisville's budget's got to be over double theirs. Yeah, I mean it's. Well, it's just, in the Northeast, college football is not. There are a more colleges event. in Boston than there than there are in like the state of you know Mississippi, Alabama, and and Louisiana combined. Yeah, but none of those schools play football. This one does, and. They're a part of the the Power Five, but now there's a there's a lot of tradition there, right? I oh mean, yeah, Matty Ice is is from there. Matt Ryan, yep. uh, Doug Flutie, like they they've, they've had got some runs. Yes, yeah. right. They've had some runs, and they're a great school. I would love to see them go seven and five. I'd oh, love yeah. to see them go eight and four, pull off a couple upsets, run off. Some, they've got some talent, and I like seeing those guys do well. I just don't know if it's realistic. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm I'm with you. I just I don't see. I don't see a lot of improvement, especially not this year. Um, but they've still got physical guys, and they will play physical, and they will make a lot of teams uncomfortable. And that's what they do best. Sure. Next, Clemson Tigers. 15-0 and last year, 8-0 are national champions. Seven starters return on offense, only four on defense. Experience returning, they're number 50 in the country, number four in the conference, which is Pretty good considering yep. what they lost, right? Dabo Sweeney, one sixteen and thirty in over ten years. That's kind of uh, insane, right? He's got two national championships in the last three years, and they are not slowing down by any means. This could actually end up being pretty quick. Their over under is eleven and a half, uh, and the, it's the same juice on both sides. Minus right. one ten to go over, minus one ten to go under. Quarterback Trevor Lawrence, running back Travis Etienne, wide receivers T Higgins and Justin Ross. Uh, and four out of their five offensive linemen are back for the number three total offense and number four scoring offense in the country last year. The defense, however, number one in scoring defense, number five in total defense, they lose six of their front seven starters. They moved wide receiver Darian Kendrick to corner for the spring, and he was one of the two best corners on the roster, which is kind of crazy, right? Now, I don't know if that means that, holy crap, they are really thin at cornerback, or... Man, like they just moved a wide receiver to cornerback, and he's awesome. Like he was playing the wrong position. Well, I mean, right? I don't know that he's playing the wrong position. I think growing up in high school, if you're 
the best player on the team. Hey, you're going to play that, both sides. If you're playing at Clemson, you were the best player on the team or one yeah. of the top three or four, depending on what school you went to. And, yeah, you play both sides of the ball. And yes. so you're a amazing receiver and um, cornerback. It, if you are running back, you usually – or an amazing running back and linebacker. Like, that doesn't shock me or scare me. Usually offensive line, defensive line don't intertwine. Yeah. Quarterbacks don't all the time. But, but yeah, so that doesn't surprise me at all. Their front seven, there's no question the way they've been recruiting, they are reloading. Well, and they've, they've still got Brent Venables, right? That's like, it. That's they, the mastermind behind They are it. going to be fine. That's that's right. So uh, they've still got a ton of talent. They're going to be okay. They I, I may don't not know be that as they, good. That's right. Will they be the best defense in the country? Will they be top two or three? They You have to go down somewhere when you lose all of that front seven. Well, And when you've got as much guys. coming back on offense as they do, right? They, I mean, well, that much coming teams. back from the number three total offense, number four scoring offense. Yeah. You, you don't have to have the number one scoring defense if correct. you got the number four scoring offense. Don't know that it changes their record at all. Especially not with this schedule. I mean, they've got A&M and at Syracuse in the first three weeks. Uh, the rest is oh, pretty should, simple. Like they are, yeah. they are the prohibitive, prohibitive favorite. Correct. To not only make the college football playoff, but to win it. Right. I would think so. Yeah, I would think so. What record did you have them? Do you have them running the table? Oh, again? I've got them twelve and zero. Okay. I just, I, 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 I wanted to, Texas A and M loses so much on defense that I can't see A and M going in there. Like they're going to demolish Georgia Tech in Week One. Yeah, no question. Uh, I think that the A&M game will be close because, you know, they have comparable talent, but Clemson has more of it. Oh, way more of it. Yeah. Um, And Kellen Mond will be able to put up points on them. You know, Jimbo will be able to come up with a game plan against a really young defense. After that, I mean, at Syracuse, uh, and we'll talk about Syracuse in a little bit, but, like, they've got a freshman quarterback, and, yes, it's a young defense, but... I just and after that you got Charlotte at North Carolina, Florida oh, no. State at home at Louisville. The rest Boston of this College conference Wofford. is not really strong. Yeah, and, and you're so according to ESPN FBI, the hardest game is at South Carolina. That's right. Which okay, they're giving like, South Carolina too much home field credit. Their hardest game is going to be A and M. Yeah, but it's second week of the season and it's at home. Yes, but but that's that's going to be the hardest game. Like you can say it's at South Carolina all you want. I just don't. I don't know that that's realistic. I, and this comes from a guy who loves South Carolina. Yeah, I I, like we, I love, love South Coach Carolina. Booth. Um, I got them eleven and one. I think it, it maybe it's just because I don't like letting teams go undefeated. And and I think anybody is above messing up. If they get three and zero, oh, it's twelve and zero. Oh. Yeah, it's done. And, and my only logic in my head was is A and M's coming for blood. They're coming for some type of revenge because of last year they had them beat. And Clemson won the game, and no chicanery or bullcrap happened. Yeah. But the worst rule in football cost A&M that game. Yeah. The worst rule in football where the fumble into the end zone gives the team to the other ball right. to the other team. And, and, and if that doesn't happen, A&M wins that game. Yeah. And Clemson probably still wins the national championship at 15-1. and one. And I understand that the quarterback is different, and, and this is not the same team. There's one team going to be so hyped up for it. If they win that game. And it takes everything out of them to win that game. I could see a letdown going to Syracuse. Yeah. That's just that's just the only. If they get through those two, man, they are moonwalking. Now let me ask you this: the Heisman Trophy winner, is it is this it right here? I mean, does he have just the overall favorite from here. what we saw last year in his last, just in three games, just in the ACC championship game and then both playoff games, the numbers he put up were. Video game line. Okay, here's the issue with the Heisman Trophy. Typically, voters give it to somebody that is that has come on strong and is completely unexpected, right? In every I, year that I happens. I don't know. Um, that I agree with because that. Because everybody thought that Tua was the winner last year, and if if Lawrence has one bad game at the end of the season at South Carolina, where they still win, but eh, he didn't look great, or he gets a little bit injured, or whatever. You know, there's your difference, right? So, yes, Lawrence, I think, could, but the, the hype is the problem, right? Tua's hype last year was the problem. Like, nobody cared that Kyler Murray was playing against, you know, video game defenses, right? It didn't matter. What mattered is, oh, well, against Georgia, Tua only went 10 out of 25. Yeah, he had a touchdown, and they won the game, but, you know, it's, it, 
the hype kills you because people immediately, whether they want to or not, there are some people that will be biased against you because of that hype. Nah, I think that's ridiculous. No, it is listen, ridiculous. I, but I, I dislike happens. Clemson. I, I, I am frustrated by the fact that they've turned into this national power. Now, could, could he win the Heisman? Like Absolutely he could win think, the Heisman. I think he's overwhelmingly the favorite. Yeah. And, and, and it's, in my eyes, it's a, it's a Tua and, and, and Trevor win or nothing right now. And I would give nod to him because I think Saban cares more about getting the national championship than getting Tua Heisman. Yeah. Okay, I could, I could see that. And I could easily see Dabo saying, Dabo's just a politician. Yeah. So. Florida State Seminoles. This is a team that I have absolutely no feel for at all. Five and seven last year, three and five in the conference. Missed a bowl game for the first time in forever. Um, they replaced offense coordinator Walt Bell. He actually took the UMass job. He did not want to really take the UMass job, I don't think. Uh, but that was just a bad fit to begin with. But they replaced him with Kendall Bryles, who has done incredible things at FAU, at, well, at Baylor, FAU, Houston. And he, he comes in and immediately changes your offense. Uh, only two offensive linemen back, but maybe that's a good thing because yeah, they, were, say, they were bad. They were really bad last year. Uh, Who's coming in? Quarterback James Blackman, running back Cam Akers, wide receiver uh, Tamori and Terry. They are going to put up stats like crazy. And they they didn't bring in a ton of top-end talent, but they've got guys that, that can be consistent, right? Uh, offensive line is kind of a crapshoot anyway, so... The defense, number 80 total defense overall last year, returns eight of their top 10 tacklers. They uh, they need the secondary to improve. They gave up 30 passing touchdowns last year. That was fifth worst in the FBS. Uh, based on averages, their turnover margin should have been like plus 2.2. It was instead minus 11. So, and that's just based on averages. And they had the worst turnover look in the country last year. So on top of playing poorly, you also had really bad luck. I think some of that changes this year. Their over-under is 7. Now, to go over that 7 is minus 130. That's the juice on it. To go under is plus 110. I'm not touching it because I've got them dead on at 7-5. and five. I think Kendall Bryles puts up enough points to be able to handle Boise State. Like, I think they've got more talent than Boise State. So, I think they, they win that game in Jacksonville. Uh, Louisiana Monroe, they'll beat. I think they lose at Virginia. They beat Louisville, NC State, they lose at Clemson, they win at Wake Forest, and they beat Syracuse. They lose to Miami, they lose at Boston College, they beat Alabama State, and then they lose at Florida. That puts them 7-5, and 4-4 five, four and four in the conference. What you got them? Got them 6-6, six and six, almost had them 5-7 and seven again. I just have no earthly idea. I know that Kendall Browse is going to change the offense. That defense wasn't great last year. Yeah. And I don't know that they're going to be great this year. It's, I brought up James Blackman, by the way, and I think that he wins the job, but Remember, they're bringing in Alex say, Hornibrook, we, too. We, we don't know that. And then and then my other thought is, is the, in the game that, that I'm a little wonky on or iffy on is the Boise State game. I think Boise State... So you, Boise State you, is putting you everything strong, into game one. You strongly dislike Boise State's head coach. And I understand that. Yeah, I don't that. like Brian Harson, but yeah. that doesn't mean I... But, like, but he's not the reason I think they lose this game. Will they score? Sure. Yeah. But the problem is, is Boise State's going to be able to score, too. This yeah. defense is not going to keep them from scoring. I, I just... Man, I don't know what to think of this team. I, last year was so much turmoil and so much just things I've never seen in college football. I've seen coaches hate each other and not get along on sidelines and and not like play as a cohesive unit. But the talent at the schools like that at Florida State usually usurps bad coaching. Yeah. We live in a day where I just don't think it does. Even these programs that are much smaller and much less athletic, there are too many good kids around the country. If you don't bring your A game, you can get got. You can get caught. Yeah. Now I think the fact that the Boise State game is the first game on the on the schedule. They've got they've got months a, to prepare. A, a better chance to win because this will be the first time out. They've if it got, was week two and they had a high school team playing first game. But there's another thing. I think Man, even I don't still, know. Maybe they need that warm-up game to get ready because it, these guys... Now, that's possible. Now, this is all just opinion here. That's right. But no, we don't I think know. they We're win not. the game because they're going to come out really fired up looking to prove a point. That's right. right. Now, Boise State having to travel all the way across the country, 
playing against a more talented team, the, et cetera. The, the one thing that's going to get Boise is playing in, in, in the humidity of Florida in early August, mid-August, late August. Yeah. That's, that's what's, that's what's going to play a bigger factor. They're yeah. out west. They're an altitude team from out west where it's dry and, and they're going to come to the, yeah, it's to a, the humid the, swamp. The of, humid of swamp in, on August 31st in Jacksonville, it's, it's going to be like walking through a wet blanket. So it, it's a little different. It's harder to breathe. It's all the different kinds of stuff. You can't prepare right? for it. You can't practice that. Got that right. Uh, so I've got them seven and five. You got them six I'm and six. I'm going six and six. The Louisville Cardinals, two and 10 last year, 0 and eight. And boy, that was some quitting ass quitting last year. Holy crap. Um, yeah, five offensive starters return, nine defensive starters are back. Experience wise, Number one in the conference, number 14 in the country. Their over-under is three and a half. The over, the juice on it, minus 125. The under, plus 105. Scott Satterfield comes in, 51 and 24 in six years at Appalachian State. Uh, he faces a multi-year rebuild of talent and attitude. And look, when Petrino left, I mean, he burned it down, right? Just everything came down. Quarterback Malik Cunningham may have the advantage uh, as a as more of a runner um, because that's what Satterfield likes to do. I mean, at, at Appalachian State, the quarterback ran 92 times last year, had 10 touchdowns. Like, wide receiver Des Fitzpatrick is legit. He's just going to have somebody to get him the ball. Uh, Puma Pass is still there. He's a senior this year, but even though he's like the better thrower between him and Cunningham, Pass is not much of a runner. He only, I mean, I think his completion percentage was like 54% last year. Not great. Now, he could end up winning the job, but we'll see. Um, defense coordinator Brian Brown, fourth DC in four years there. They had the number 128 scoring defense in the country last season. Ten starters could return. Not a one of them is guaranteed their spot. They right? shouldn't be. No, they shouldn't be. Uh, the winnable games are all on the road. The most difficult games are at home. That does not lead to good things. Nope. Um, I mean, it, it, in 2018, they underachieved against the spread by an average of 17 and a half points. In the last, like, four or five games, they underachieved by over 21 points per game. Underachieved the spread yep. by 21 points per game. Like, this team quit. quit. And all those quitters are back. Number and one in the conference on not, returning not all, all of those them, guys. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And that's the thing, like... When Petrino leaves, like, there's two different phases, right? It's like, you, first you have to come in and, like, figure out how to change the culture, and then you have to, like, run off some of the guys, et cetera. Like, I've got Louisville at 2-10. and 10. I got them 2-10 and 10 again. I, you said multi-year rebuild. I couldn't believe he took this job. I know that, that, that Appalachian State had become a national power in their own right, in like that level of football, but there's no and, and yet like the goal is to get to a power five job. Man, there's gonna be power five jobs opening yeah. that are so much better for this. Just next year, just wait till this year. One more year at App State, continue to dominate, continue to grow, well, and, 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 got, and to kill it. They're the favorite again in right. uh, uh, in the Sun Belt. That's right, and and you continue to grow, you continue to kill it, and then just wait for something better. Because th I wouldn't have wanted this job. This is a this is a really hard rebuild. Yeah. I, I guess you got to give the guy props for saying I'm going to go do something. I'm going to do something well, hard. I, I will. I will tell you this. Um, just taking it from the ground up, like yes, it is difficult, but he has done that. Like he he knows True. how to do that. And if you've got a president and an administration that is fully behind you. Absolutely. Well, I think it's a good job for him. You, because You might be right on that. I didn't think of that. Yeah. There are some people that just like to build. Yeah. They're, I mean, they just they want to take over a train wreck. because I mean, then Dave they get Clawson, to, like yeah, he's, they we'll get, talk about they Wake they get, Forest. They but. get to build it in their own image, and they get yeah. to build it the way they want. And, and Okay, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I just think there was not too long ago where Louisville was being in the consideration for national championships. Well, two years ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, Like it, Lamar Jackson... Heisman Trophy and what was it? And, 2016, where they were like yes, number three the in country. the country, and then they go to Houston and get blasted. That's, 
Yep. Like, and it's, it's just, just one of those things where I, man, I think it's going to take something special to ever get back there. But I don't know that you have to. If you can get to six and six and seven and five every year and well, be I relevant mean, they, in they, the conference, you're you're going to get to a point where they because they can get talent. Right? Oh yeah. And they, yeah. So they can go nine and three, ten and two sometimes, but I don't think you can do that. No, all the time. They won't Not be in the teams. SEC. No, they'll they'll be one of those teams where every four years they'll have that one recruiting class that that was great. Yes, and those guys become juniors and seniors, and you got some NFL guys on that on that roster, and and you can and you can play. Yeah, the I NC, got them two and ten. You got them Sorry. two and ten. I got them two and ten. NC State Wolfpack. North Carolina State, nine and four last year, five and three in conference. They returned four starters on offense, eight on defense. Experience returning, it's not good. No, they lose a lot. Number 13 in the conference, number 121 in the country. Whew. Over under seven and a half to go over the juice is plus 120 to go under it's minus 140. These lines, by the way, are the early lines. Obviously, some of these have changed. Oh, yeah. But and they're um, going to continue to change continue all the way up until kickoff on So these these August. were the opening lines at, I think, Caesars. I think they were the first ones that really put it out. Um, so Dave Doran, 43 and 34 in six years. He has had 13 players drafted in the NFL in the last two years. He has turned Raleigh into one of the uh, loudest stadiums in the ACC, and he should absolutely be given credit for that. Oh, yeah. That fan base is all in on this team. They're replacing their offensive coordinator, their quarterback, their primary running back. It's tough. Uh, they've got all new starting receivers. They've got three new starters on the offensive line. Uh, that's not good. Last year, they had the number 108 passing defense, but they returned five starters in the secondary. The good news is they're not as young as they were last year. Injuries kind of kind of caused all that. Uh, recruiting has gone well for the defensive line and linebackers, but they may need time to develop. Uh, here's the deal, though. Dave Doran, he has been able to find some of those diamonds in the rough, and develop them up. And he has been working on some of these guys in the background, but they have not gotten to play a lot. That's right. So they've got some talent there. Uh, kicker Chris Dunn, 23 out of 26 on field goals. Last year, he is absolutely reliable. That's always good when you've got an inexperienced team and you just need to find a way to put points up. That's right. Uh, the in schedule, close games. I, if you look at teams that play one-possession games, yeah. usually the team with a better kicker has a better Typically record wins. in those games. Yeah. Uh, schedule favorable. The ceiling is probably six or seven wins this year. Like, next year is going to be the year for them. And I've said that about some like some of these teams. Mm-hmm. But this is one of them where this year will be spent developing. And if you can have a season where the floor is probably, you know, five wins and the ceiling is like seven, well, I've got them at six and six. I okay. mean, i got them beating East Carolina and Western Carolina. I've got them losing at West Virginia. I got a win over Ball State and then a loss at Florida State, uh, loss to Syracuse, loss at Boston College, loss at Wake Forest, loss to Clemson. But then I've got them winning the last three. I got a win over Louisville at Georgia Tech and North Carolina. So three and five in the conference, and I think that's a pretty good year this year. I do too. I got them seven and five. Do, do you know who he reminds me of, head coach? I would love to know. I don't want to call him a poor man's disc because I think he's almost exactly as. I think he's a lot like Dan Mullen. Dan takes three-star talent yeah. and puts them in the NFL a lot. Yeah, I can see that. A lot. What he did at Mississippi State was really impressive. And a lot, most of these guys that, that have gone to the league, they were not five-star blue chips. Yeah. And, and I, man, that's a valuable, valuable thing to be able to do. It's kind of amazing. It, it's, it always impresses me. So it's one of the reasons I really wanted to go eight and four. I think... They just got a little bit more learning to do, and there's going to be some parity in in the uh, in the ACC. So I've got them seven and five, one game better. We got two more. We did not hit our thirty minute limit, but that's okay. I'm not that worried about it. Um, Syracuse Orange, Dino Babers, ten and three last year, six and two. This was a complete turnaround. Six Love starters back on offense, seven on defense. Experience returning, number fifty nine in the country, number six in the conference. Their over-under is 7.5. Now, the opening juice was minus 140 for over, plus 120 to go under. Uh, Dino Babers, 18 and 19 in three years. Uh, He gets, really, Syracuse's most manageable schedule since 2013. 
they could get game day for the first time in week three when Clemson comes in. Um, there's no more Eric Dungy. Tommy DeVito is going to be the new quarterback. Where do Dungy's carries go? Because he ran the ball a ton last year. Uh, it might be screens. It might just be a regular power running game. It might be, you know, they'll figure out something. They were the number 11 scoring offense in the country in 2018. Dino figured it out. Figured yeah. it out. Uh, defensive line is absolutely loaded. Alton Robinson uh, is a beast. Free safety, Andre Sisco, tied for the nation lead in interceptions. He had seven last year. Kicker, Andre Smith, went from a walk-on to 30 out of 34 field goals, and he won the Groza Award as a walk-on redshirt freshman last year. This team is capable, because of the schedule, because of everything else, they are capable of winning 10 games again. Absolutely. Now, what is the ceiling beyond that? Or what, it, what is what can happen? Okay. I don't think you get much further than that. Oh, right? no, no, because no. they still don't have as much talent as some of these other teams, but they have a coaching advantage that a lot of these other schools do not have. Now, will Tommy DeVito be able to run that offense? We'll see. It depends on what they try and do with the personnel that they've got because this year's team will be different compared to last year's. But that's where um, we trust coaching, right? Yes. Like, I don't, I'm don't. i okay. If I trust in a coach, I'm totally fine with betting on players I've never seen before. Yeah. Because I understand the types of kids that they recruit and the way that they coach them up and, and what they do. It doesn't scare me when they lose guys. A little bit. My thoughts were on on the Wolfpack with the NC State. Same thing. Yeah. Like I know, know they Dave lost Dorn. a lot, but but I know they're going to replace them. They're not replacing them with true freshmen that have never stepped on the field. They've never coached them before, and they've only had like a couple of months of these kids. I I trust. I think he's one of the best. Co- I mean, there's a lot of coaches I fall in love with. Yeah. He, coach, he's a coach, really good coach. Coach Babers is really good, and they are putting a lot of money into this program. Um, Syracuse is really trying to step up. Hey, we're not just basketball school anymore. We're a football school, and we're here to stay. I think they're the second best team in this conference. Yeah, I. I mean, and you're I behind Clemson. Like that's nothing to sneeze at. No, it's it, the only sad thing is you're in the same division. You're in the same you. division as Clemson. Yeah, I, that, I, that I completely sucks. agree. So I've, I got them ten and two. I've got them ten and two as well. I got a loss to Clemson. I got a loss at Florida State. Uh, but that's that, it. that second loss could this, be anywhere. They, I was but, about to I say, mean, listen, listen to the I road think schedule. if they beat Florida State, they, they they are a team that still makes mistakes. Right. They, they could still, still gets, lose somewhere Gets else. beaten. So, but, yeah. But listen, at Liberty, at Maryland, and then you got Clemson at home, so that's a loss. Uh, Western Michigan, Holy Cross, at NC State, who is, you know, but they're coming off a bye before NC State. That's right. Pitt at Florida State, Boston College at home, Pitt at home, uh, at Duke, at Louisville, and then Wake Forest at home. Like, the schedule sets up brilliantly for them. If something happens and Clemson gets to the brink at A&M, we talk about it, maybe an injury happens, maybe Trevor Lawrence goes down at A&M, if something weird happens, they go into Clemson. They could win. And they come into Syracuse. Syracuse gets them. The question then is, is can Syracuse control their emotions, play the big favorite, because I think at that point they're favored in the rest of these games. Yeah. And and can they handle being favored in a schedule in which they should now realistically go undefeated? Like, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that's going to happen. Okay? Now, what, what's Calm insane down. to me is the fact that the over-under is seven and a half. Well, hang now, on. We're, we're going to have an over-unders uh, uh, episode. In- when, when we get to, So we were looking at our over-unders, and I just did like a quick Google search. I want one place. I didn't shop lines. I said, we're, I'm going to pick one spot. And the first thing I found was just CBS did an article. CBS had them at five wins. And, and they pulled that from some casino. They pulled, oh, you looked Fandle. at it. Uh, Fandles. Fandle. Casino. And, and I'm thinking that that cannot be right. And the juice was high, but it was like 160. Like it wasn't insane. Yeah. Five. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I could be. We could be way off here. We. That. I'd be shocked if they went seven and five though. Oh, I would too. I mean that. I mean, the schedule sets up that brilliantly. Would, but it, I think it's better perception because guys look and see, look where they lost at the running back. Look where they lost at the quarterback. The most important positions, and and for for this type of offense. And I just don't see those things because those guys weren't NFL stars anyway. It's not like, not like yeah. they lost the first pick in the draft, man. This is not like Kentucky losing Josh Allen. No, no. Like, a, this a, is completely just a different. transitional talent that that yeah. that oversees everything. 
Yeah, there's, I love there's, this team. I do too. And I well, I, and I love Dino Babers. So we both got them ten and two. Yes, I thought I was going to be crazy on that. Not, not, no, I, no, you I've made me them. feel a little sane. I well, that's good. That's uh, hopefully we do that for each other. <laughs> the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, seven and six last year, three and five in conference. Returning starters, they got five on offense, four on defense. As far as experience goes, number two Julian, in the conference, yeah. number thirty-three in the country. That's pretty good. Uh, over unders five and a half. The schedule is a big part of that. Uh, to go over that, for them to hit six wins or more, juice is minus one fifty. To go under, plus one thirty. So obviously they expect them to go over. Uh, look, I, or sorry, sorry, sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. It's minus one thirty five to go over, plus one fifteen to go under. So they still expect them to go over, just maybe not as much. Yeah. Head coach Dave Clawson, twenty eight and thirty five in five years. Um, continues to prove he is a program rebuilder, right? He started a true freshman quarterback, and he fired his defensive coordinator after four games last year. They still went to and won a bowl game. They have won three straight bowl games. Like that's Or they've been to three straight three, bowl three, games. I'd say I don't uh, think they've won all of them. Quarterbacks, think... sophomore Sam Hartman. He broke his leg in the ninth game last year. And then junior Jamie Newman. Uh, Newman came in and won three out of four in relief. They're both back. They lose three out of five offensive linemen, uh, basically the whole left side of the line and the center. Uh, defense has struggled since Mike Elko left. I mean, they were number 116 in total defense. They lost their their core, both of their defensive tackles. Um, but defensive end, Carlos Basham Jr. can absolutely be a star. Uh, it's not an easy schedule. The young players have got to step up so that we can find out more about Clawson's uh, recruiting acumen, really. But... I like Clawson. He always figures out a way to win. His guys are in the right position all the time, and maybe not so much on defense. But on offense, they find ways to put up points. And the fact that they got both of those quarterbacks back, I like that a lot. I think that they will be able to replace the guys on the offensive line. Um, I don't think they're going to be great by any stretch of the imagination, but I got them at 6-6 six and six and making another bowl game. Now, that's 2-6 and six in the conference. Uh, but I think they beat Utah State week one at home. I think they win at Rice. They lose to North Carolina, beat Elon, lose at Boston College, beat Louisville, lose to Florida State, beat NC State, then lose at Virginia Tech and at Clemson, beat Duke, and then lose at Syracuse to end the season. I got them 6-6 six and six as well. Um, I, I don't know, and I probably could look this up pretty easily. I don't think they get blown out in a lot of games. No. I no, think no, no, part no. of having no, a, they, a really they, well-coached team. They have. No, I mean, well, but, yeah, you're right. But and not I, that they never do. I would bet that they cover a lot of spreads, even when they don't win. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're they're a tough beat. They're they're kind of like that thorn in the side team in the conference, to where a lot of teams are favored in yeah. those games. But man, you don't you don't know the teams they're going to cover, and you don't always just can't just chalk up W's either. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're going to be a tough out. Uh, I got them six and six as well. I wanted to I wanted to have them at least seven and five again just. And that just schedule to, makes it almost impossible. The back half of that schedule is loaded. Yeah. It really is loaded. And then some of these teams you just don't well, even in the know what you're getting. I mean, you, like you're, I, you're playing Utah State week one. Like That's that's right. That's, that's, that's pretty tough. difficult. So, and and I, once again, I, I, I said this earlier. Oh, the other part about to, this. don't know what to make of Florida State. The other part about this, by the way, Wake Forest and North Carolina, and people hadn't talked about this in a while, but that is a non-conference game. They, they were rivals for a long time. And because of the way that the ACC schedule has set up now that they have 14 teams, North Carolina and Wake Forest, like, they were not going to play from, like, 2016 until 2022. So they just got a, a non-conference series between themselves. So, so wait, so, this won't count against so their conference record? Will not count against the conference record. How does that work? Yeah, because it's a non-conference game. Uh, I don't like that. Well, I mean, it's not any different than, like, the Pac-12 playing nine games, but it, it doesn't count against their conference record. But it should, because they're in their conference. Yeah, but everybody else plays eight conference games. They didn't have to play this one if they didn't want to. I, I don't I don't think it's a bad idea. If you have a traditional rival, like say say that Alabama and Georgia wanted to play more often than once every six years. Like I, I don't see any problem with them scheduling like a home and home. Like that's that's exactly what these guys did. And it not counting against their conference record. Yeah. Even though they're in the same conference. Yeah. I mean, it's weird. It's definitely weird. But it's not any more weird than, like, Liberty and New Mexico State playing each other twice in the same season. That would just give teams, like, 
a reason to to schedule against your harder opponents on the other side, non-conference games. That way, you can still win your conference if you lose that game. Yes, but look, both teams have to agree to it. North Carolina and Wake Forest were not going to compete for no. national titles. Or You're right. So they're not worried about a college football playoff. But because that is a home state traditional rivalry, they wanted to keep that going. So in order to keep it going, where they would play more than once every six years. So they couldn't just say, hey, we're going to have Alabama, uh, Tennessee. It's just every year. Well, just, that every, one's already every year. But, but, but why, why not just say, make this our every year Cross cross uh, conference rival. See, we play the, them every year. How is that hard? I mean, it's not complicated, man. Well, because they've already got some of those, I believe. But why? Like Wake Forest. Okay, is, yeah. So uh, if it's Duke. Virginia Tech or if it's Duke, then no. Like we're gonna do something else. Yeah, but it's it, it's up to the teams. I don't have a problem with this. the conference. Like, I don't, I don't know conference, why you're worried about I don't, this. I don't like it. I don't like that. <laughs> And it's not a knock on Wake Forest or North Carolina. Just some conference just commissioner weird. should just step in and say, "No, you're gonna play it. That's fine." But like, what? do you have to play Virginia Tech? Like, do we got like, we can figure this out. This is not hard. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I don't know. Either way, all right. That's gonna wrap up the ACC Atlantic. Uh, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go over to tunicatravel.com. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube if you're watching there. Hit it on Apple Podcast. Leave us a nice review. Leave some comments. Share the show out. We appreciate you guys. We will see you again next go round. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.